what's up everybody welcome back to exotic astrology again nice to see you back and the other day somebody asked me a question i was amazed because i had not yet spoken on this topic so finally i decided why not to speak on it today yes therefore therefore today's topic is why are the kendra houses the kendra houses we all know right one four seven ten why are they known as benefic houses or they are known as naisargik shubhasthan which means naturally auspicious or benefic houses yes why why at all uh, are they known like that so that's the topic for today yes so there you go if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below please go to the description and then mail me accordingly okay just don't mail me in my uh, email or send me messages in whatsapp because then again i have to send you the link of the website and before i begin and because today is the video on kinder houses so i must say god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him <coughs> so now what are kendras kendras are the first fourth seventh tenth let's do some homework here first house is the lagna the self the way we appear to the world the fourth house represents our education primarily our home our mother our comforts our peace our land our property all those things that we have then seventh house is the house of partners business partnerships marriage relationships anything to do with the other people then 10th house shows our status our name fame career and our primary karma in life now why are these four houses known as naisargik shubhasthan see basically you have to understand what is the meaning of the word kendra kendra means center yes it means central as we say in hindi na kendra sarkar which means they represent those areas of our life which we almost cannot avoid <laughs> yes for example the fifth house is not a part of the kendra yes the ninth house is not a part of the kendra they they are trikonas they are supporting houses which means if you don't go to god nobody can take you there yes you have to go yourself if you don't have children nobody can do it for you you only have to uh, do it but you can still do away with them yes if you don't want to go to god that's fine if you don't want to have children that's also fine nobody can take your neck and <laughs> put you in water but with the kendras you almost cannot avoid them which means they are unavoidable yes because the lagna also shows the body the self the physical built and your intelligence yes so now whoever you are you are a good person or a bad person you are a male or you are a female you will always have a body yes and you will always have an intelligence now that may be more or less or that may be directed to some good place or some bad place that's a separate topic but you will always have something inside <laughs> then fourth house you will live somewhere right <laughs> it can't happen that you are not living living anywhere you have to live somewhere like i am living in this apartment which i am very soon going to change but some now somebody may say oh but i live in the streets well then that is your fourth house yes so you will have to live somewhere the lagna has to sustain somewhere yes which means the body has to stay in one particular place it may be your friend's place your husband's place your wife's place wherever it is so the fourth house represents that aspect of our life now seventh house well you may say oh i choose not to get married but then you will have you, you will be interacting with other people right you cannot avoid uh, human beings <laughs> yes 7 billion humans i guess in this planet so you will anyways end up interacting with somebody or the other yes so that is also one aspect of your life which you cannot avoid yes either you want it or you don't 
unless probably you are a yogi you are meditating in some forest but even then you will find animals you will find other yogis no. <laughs> it doesn't work like that or most of the people as we know they are married or they are into relationships everything is under the seventh house all the interactions are under the seventh house then which house comes then the house which is the most powerful house among these four houses is the 10th house what does it mean when i say the most powerful house the most powerful house means the most demanding should i repeat the most powerful means the most demanding because they say that 10th house is the house of the king whichever planet sits in the 10th house that dominates the chart yes why do they say that because <coughs> whichever planet is there in the 10th house that planet will consume a lot of our time and attention and focus in life because that is the planet related to which we will be doing the majority karmas in our life yes because from the morning since uh, the uh, breakfast time then lunch then snacks yes afternoon evening night dinner you are always doing something or the other you are never sitting idle remember this people say oh i always keep sitting idle no i am not doing anything in life no you are always doing something either you are thinking or you are physically doing something but you are always doing something <laughs> nobody is idle in this world yes somebody is drinking and smoking and they're lying down in the bed thinking when i will get a million dollars or when i will get a good girl or when i will get a good husband yes so even then you are doing something yes you are thinking or maybe you are writing or maybe you are visiting some place yes so that is how uh, you understand the kendras and because most of the uh, time in this world goes in our work yes if you are working in it company then minimum 9 to 10 hours you have to work or if you are working in, uh, with your own business even then lot of time goes so 10th house sucks away lot of our energy and our attention yes and our power basically that is why it is said that 10th house is the strongest of the kendra houses yes but now the question is why are they known as shubhasthan means auspicious houses good houses i would not call it good i would say auspicious rather or why do they say that any planet in kendra performs well i mean depending on the sign of course yes and the concept of directional strength is also defined by the kendra which means jupiter mercury gets digbala directional strength in the first house moon venus in the second house saturn in the seventh house sorry moon venus in fourth then saturn in the seventh and sun mars in the tenth house yes so these are the seven planets which get directional strength rahu ketu there is no information about that so why is there no directional strength in the fifth house in the ninth house or in the third house or in the eighth house eleventh house why because those houses don't represent prominent aspects of our life yes now for somebody the children aspect may be very prominent that can happen if the lagna lord is in the fifth or the fifth lord is in the lagna that can happen or if there is an exchange that is a separate topic but in general i am saying yes so this means that whichever planet is in kendra whichever planet is in either of these four houses it represents something which we cannot avoid in this world yes the natural significations and also their rulerships so for example suppose somebody has a sagittarius lagna and for that sagittarius lagna sun is in the first house okay for example what does this mean for sagittarius sun rules the ninth house yes so now when the ninth lord is in the lagna it is not only sun it is also the ruler of the ninth house so you have to understand that for anybody who has sun in sagittarius in the first house things related to father and spirituality spiritual personalities gurus they will always remain prominent 10 times more because not only it is sun which is the karaka for the ninth house but now here sun is also the ruler of the ninth house so for sagittarius sun is doubly responsible for things like father and spirituality religion yes 
so these things will be unavoidable in the person's life for example if somebody is a sagittarius lagna and they have mars in the seventh house yes then that means which houses does mars rule in their chart mars for sagittarius rules the fifth house as we know yes and it also rules the 12th house so things pertaining to the fifth house and the 12th house will always play a prominent role in their life yes now it can depend if it is in the seventh house the prominence will be lesser than if it is in the tenth house yes so if <coughs> for aries lagna mars is in the tenth house yes then martian traits will be very dominant in the person's life yes because mars also gets directional strength in the tenth house so now why why in the universe are they called good houses because they represent our actions basically yes or those things which you cannot avoid so there is a big possibility that if a planet is in a kendra and if it is not well placed okay then when we are working on the aspects of the planet it can happen that that planet improves over time yes so for example suppose uh, you are a you are having a debilitated mercury in the kendra yes any house in the kendra you have a mercury which is debilitated okay suppose you are a pisces lagna and you have mercury in the first house that means it is in debility yes now because it is in debility the results of mercury will come as per the debility but 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 remember this because it is in kendra and especially in a powerful house like the lagna then what it means that over a period of time when you are working on it the debility will improve yes basically mercury debility shows what it can show a million things depending on which house and which rulership it has but in general it shows that there is a, a miscalculation which is there in the person's head yes which means the person doesn't uh, think much or the person thinks too much <laughs> or the person has some wrong thoughts wrong thoughts means those things which the person uh, should not cultivate unnecessary thoughts so that aspect will be there in the person but because it is in kendra and kendra represents those things which you are working upon so suppose somebody has mercury in the lagna then things pertaining to knowledge education other people friends dealing contracts social interactions these things will always be a part of his life yes so if the person tries to work on them then it can happen that those aspects of his life improve naturally yes so that is the only area the kendra houses where you have a time to work on that planet yes so having mercury in kendra in my opinion is a much better position than to have mercury in the fifth house now they say that mercury in the fifth or jupiter in the fifth makes the person very intelligent that is true but what is the guarantee that that person will use that intelligence yes that will happen more if jupiter or mercury or the ruler of the fifth house is in kendra should i repeat that will happen if ruler of the fifth is in kendra because that shows fifth lord shows where the intelligence is getting used yes so if the fifth lord goes and sits in any of the kendra houses that is one of the rajyogas of course we know that i will discuss on rajyogas later but that shows that our intelligence is getting used all the time yes and even then if you have a debilitated mercury in the ascendant or in the fourth or seventh or tenth house that will still balance out now balancing does not mean that the mercury's debility will not act so people say oh this is a uh, bad this is good so it has cancelled no it doesn't happen like that but it shows that even though our mercury is debilitated we are still using our intelligence properly because the fifth lord is well 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 placed as per uh, house okay i mean well placed in the sense it is in kendra so we are using that intelligence so when we keep using keep using keep using as they say practice makes a man perfect yes similarly if somebody's jupiter or sun is very badly spoiled but if the ninth lord is placed in the kendra then that is a fantastic position to have yes so uh, we have that dharma karma adhipati yoga which is known to be the best of the best of the best yogas of course i have not started the series on yogas i will start it very soon 
but the topmost the best of all yogas is known as dharma karmadhipati yoga where the ninth lord and tenth lord are sitting in each other's houses or they are conjunct or they are aspecting each other yes that is known as the adhi uh, dharma and karma adhipati yoga means dharma is the ninth house karma is the tenth house so adhipati is the rulers yoga is addition or combination whatever you call so that yoga is considered to be very powerful why because it shows that spirituality is coming to the karma bhava yes ninth lord is coming to the tenth house and the tenth lord going to the ninth is show, showing that majority of his karmas will go towards spirituality so it's like saying you are going towards spirituality and spirituality is coming to you fantastic that is best thing that can happen that is why that is known to be the sarvoch of all yogas yes similarly fifth lord in the fourth what does it mean fifth house is the house of intelligence fourth house is the house of knowledge with the education so that means you are using your intelligence in education that's fantastic that is one of the best raj yogas you can have yes so if fifth lord is in the, is in the lagna you are always very much thoughtful you always think with your intelligence that's fantastic ninth lord in the lagna fantastic fifth lord in the 10th you are doing things related to intelligence and education and teaching all these things ninth lord in the 4th fantastic all the divinity is coming to your home your home is very spiritual if the ninth lord is in the 4th depending on other things of course <laughs> okay so if somebody has difficult planets or challenging planets as per sign but if uh, if the ruler of that house is well placed yes in the kendra then things can be mitigated as i said for example if 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 you have a debilitated jupiter but if your ninth lord is in the kendra fantastic keep doing spirituality things will improve yes your sun is not very well placed but if the lagna lord is strong that can mitigate yes so suppose your uh, venus is having some difficulty your venus is in virgo but suppose your seventh lord is well placed yes then also things can come under control but if nothing is happening then it can be a bit difficult okay so then we have to ensure now irrespective of whichever planet is in the kendra or whichever uh, houses it is ruling or whatever the natural significations of the planet is there will always be some problem or the other yes which means that saturn will uh, either afflict or get afflicted by rahu or by mars yes or your venus will be afflicted or the seventh house will be afflicted yes so in these circumstances we have to ensure that we do the remedies now when a planet is in the kendra it does not mean that you don't have to do remedies so somebody told me that day that oh one astrologer told me oh your uh, uh, this planet is in kendra any planet in kendra means you don't have to do remedies no oh, that's total nonsense i've never heard it anywhere anybody telling so some people are manufacturing their own rules i know that but just because a planet is in kendra it doesn't mean that you don't have to do any remedies okay because ultimately we are dealing with the material world yes kendra actually represents the material world yes so the very fact that we have taken birth is a proof that we have performed many 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 sins otherwise we would not take birth here because after taking birth what happens we undergo all suffering right as lord krishna says in the gita janma mrityu jara vyadi dukha dosha anu darshanam janma mrityu jara vyadi janma is birth mrityu is death jara vyadi birth old age disease and death these four things so these are the things that we will face after get, getting birth so we always have to do remedies for the planets which are in a difficult shape which are in a difficult dignity and depending on all the combinations which are there in the horoscope yes depending on the sign and depending on the house so just because a planet is in kendra it does not mean that it doesn't require remedies okay now it can be well placed in digbala sign wise but if it is afflicted then you might have to do remedies okay and that will depend on the individual combinations and the entire horoscope has to be seen in detail for that okay so that is what i wanted to say here why are kendras called nat nat natural uh, auspicious houses yes nasargik shubhasthan because they give us an opportunity to work and by our practice our efforts our hard work we improve the situations of that planet yes so there you go that is it from my side if you are new to the channel and you have not yet subscribed then please subscribe to it 
and if you want a consultation then please approach me through my website the link is there in the description below and until next time maybe with another video on astrology okay until next time bye bye see you